more satellite images, but not a lot more answers. So let's bring in our expert panel for more. We have Captain Tim Taylor. He's a sea operations specialist and president of Tiburon Subsea Services and Ocean Research Corporation. We also have Miles O'Brien, CNN aviation analyst, science correspondent for C uh, PBS NewsHour. Thanks so much Thank for you. coming on, Good Miles. To be here. I want to begin with you because I think this is something that I imagine our viewers are struggling with because every day, every other day, there are new satellite images that show specs that possibly could be debris. Uh, but every day, they're in roughly the same area. I mean, as you begin to piece these pictures together, um, is it reasonable to conclude we're beginning to see a debris field here, that this is more evidence of a, of a contiguous debris field? Layperson's response, in a word, yes. Uh, I think we got three things to think about here. Their, their location, first of all the sheer numbers, the similarity of a lot of these objects. I, I would presume a trash pile might have different gradations and shades. Uh -huh. I don't see that. And finally, what I see, maybe I'm trying to see it, mm -hmm. are shapes, aerodynamic shapes, which, which would fit an airplane. There are th there's some pieces there that could be pieces of fuselage, maybe even the horizontal stabilizer. So I, I think this is, this is very promising. Yeah, that's one of the key things is shape, I imagine. Tim, as you know, they've had to suspend the close-up searches. You know, they'll, they'll look from miles above in the sky from satellite, then they'll send the planes in to get a closer look. They've had trouble with weather. C can you explain to our viewers the difficulties of going from a satellite image uh, to actually locating and picking up eventually with one of the ships out there, recovery ships, picking up these pieces? How hard is it to go from miles up in the sky to a couple hundred feet above the water? We are fighting Mother Nature. It, it, and we're not only fighting Mother Nature, we're fighting Mother Nature. She has the home field advantage. It's late in the fourth quarter, and, and she's killing us. We've we got to come back. We've got to find these things. But what you're doing with these satellites, it, it, you're looking at a satellite image, and then you're not being able to put a ship on location until days later. And then then you're not able to, to put a... The, recovery till days. You're not even finding this stuff. You're chasing it. Every day is, is, a, is a delayed image. Weather is knocking you down. It is, it is almost an impossible task. Yeah. And, and the target is moving. And All the target's moving every moving. day. And you got the weather, as you mentioned. We're, we're told that the next flights not, might not be up until as far from now as Sunday. You know, that's th another three days away, and that can move a lot of miles in that time. And, and in different directions. Um, the, the data... The data links are, are it's a positive thing that they're getting multiple data hits from different satellites from different countries, and they may be able to identify the same pieces of wreckage and follow them over time. But as it gets longer and longer and longer and dispersed farther and farther, the odds just go exponentially against tracking this back if it is the wreckage to the, where it went in the water. Yeah, it's incredible. When you look at these pictures of the, the way the currents move, you kind of imagine all these neat little arrows, but in fact, it's these swirls. It's like a thousand washing machines there. Mm -hmm. um, Miles, there was a great interview in the AP that talked to some of these spotters and the challenge that they have looking out the airplane, you know, eyes glazing over 30 minutes to 60 minutes, kind of staring at the same patch of ocean, and even particular challenges like some of the seaweed apparently in this part of the ocean is orange, you know, and they, they look for orange objects and, they, and they've had a lot of false alarms. But I know you, you've been up with searchers uh, regarding the Steve Fawcett uh, when yeah. he went down in Arizona. T tell us what it's like when you're staring out of a plane and how much of a challenge it is to pick this stuff up. Well, here's a little footage from September of 2007. I flew my plane out to Minden, Nevada and flew a Civil Air Patrol mission one day and got a keen appreciation for the, the challenges. Now, the Nevada desert is kind of like the ocean. There's a lot of junk in the Nevada desert, leftovers from mining days. And as we searched, it's amazing how your eye will play tricks on you and make you think you're seeing an airplane when, you know, it's an old wheelbarrow from a silver mine. And this is the kind of thing these guys are up against. And so you really have, what, what the key is, what the Civil Air Patrol does, is you have to do it in incremental shifts. You know, an hour is a long time, you know, really less than it. I know these crews rotate people through, but it is very fatiguing. And, of course, human nature is you want to find something. That orange seaweed, you want it to be right. that life raft, right. right? Yeah. They're also talking about tricks that they use, like moving their eyes in an X motion yeah, so they don't to, get glazed yeah. over. There's a certain pattern you're supposed mm -hmm. to do and all that. I, I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> well, that, it's, and these guys are professionals, yes. of course. They're soldiers, they're sail, sailors and airmen. Uh, of course, it's great that you bring up Fawcett, too, because that was a case that was on land, uh, and it was in Nevada, right? I mean, yeah. just a piece of Nevada. It took them two years to find that. Yeah, wreckage, no, right? and it was found really kind of a hiker mm -hmm. going through the woods found yeah. some ID cards that had been carried away by an animal. So you can imagine how that ended up. But the truth was that search, which lasted that intense search for a month, and then there was private searching after that, did not yield anything. It was a hiker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes just luck plays a part. 
So, Tim, let's look to the next steps in this search. You know, weather's going to deteriorate over the next several days. Uh, that must make it harder, I imagine, to use model forecasts to figure out where uh, those currents are bringing all this debris. How much of a challenge is that? I mean, days, weeks, you know, what does this push, uh, how far does this push this search out? It, it's, it's getting almost to the point of impossibility. I mean, even the best mathematicians, unless they, they get so many clues and they recover so much, right now, even if they do recover something, it looks like it's going to be so minimal that it's still not enough to, to, to plug it back, especially since it's, it's been three weeks. Yeah, it's, so, it's, I mean, I mean uh, Miles just said they were look, lost a plane on land and they couldn't find it. Okay, this is the middle of the ocean in the most remote part of the world that nobody goes. So, uh, you know, it's, it's daunting. Yeah, and then the land is not moving like that ocean is, constantly mm -hmm. moving targets. Well, it's a sobering thought, but, but unfortunately that's reality. Thanks very much to Miles O'Brien, Tim Taylor uh, for joining us.